Is this permafrost we're walking on now? Yes. We're on top of intact permafrost mm -hmm. on a hillock, mm -hmm. and as we walk down, this area is actually starting to collapse. Dr. Charles Miller is a climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. He's studying permafrost, Arctic soil that's thawing as the planet warms and causing havoc in the boreal forests of Alaska. He took us to an area just outside Fairbanks, where the ground is starting to melt. So as we walk through here, you'll notice that, number one, as we get in here, the terrain becomes quite squishy, and this is the active layer beginning to thaw out uh, underneath what we're standing on. It's, very it's like spongy. jumping on a mattress, kind of. Yes, it's very it's spongy. Gives. And you can see all the vegetation comes down with it. Why are these trees leaning? The permafrost that had been giving them firm structure underneath has degraded. It's thawed out underneath, and so it's collapsing. I'm now down in the bottom of this drainage gully, and you can begin to see how the soil is even falling away through here. This kind of abrupt erosion, as you can see, is causing the trees to tilt in. The forest could eventually collapse on itself, and uh, this will change rather dramatically in the next decade or so. Areas like this, where permafrost is melting, are scattered throughout northern Alaska, making them hard to study at scale. But Dr. Miller is doing just that. He's leading a NASA team called the Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment. These scientists fly a jet loaded with sophisticated laser sensors over the Alaskan tundra to monitor changes in the permafrost. Flaps are set. Trim is 12. Check. Why is it important to measure that active layer of permafrost? We have seen over the last 30 or 40 years that the temperature in the permafrost is rising dramatically. In fact, last year was the hottest winter on record in the Arctic. And from the air, you can see where changes are starting to happen. When the permafrost thaws and the ice in the permafrost vanishes, frequently what happens is there's a large subsidence or lowering of the ground surface. That provides a very convenient place for water to collect. So you will see, as if by magic, new lakes and ponds appear across the Arctic every year. While the Great Thaw is yet another indicator of climate change, the concern about what's happening here goes much deeper than that. As the permafrost thaws, microbes start digesting that carbon and releasing CO2 and methane, two major greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere. Just last week, the UN's climate panel rang the alarm bell about the impact this release will have on global warming. There is approximately 1,000 billion metric tons of organic carbon in the top three meters of soil in the permafrost. To put that in context, there's approximately 350 billion tons of carbon that's been released into the atmosphere from all of the human activity since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So about three times that amount is in those top three meters of permafrost soils. If even a portion of that carbon gets released, it could be devastating to the planet. And if global temperatures rise, as the UN panel predicts, Dr. Miller says that sudden permafrost thaw could be imminent. It might happen sooner rather than later, and it might happen faster than we're currently expecting. 